Hi everybody. I am wishing that we were together in class, but I'm also thankful that we can meet this way. So this is the level five English class. I'm Lori Ford. And today I thought we'd just review some of the grammar that we've already done. If you have your white books, this is the part that we have talked about. It's gonna be those adjective pairs the ones that end in ed or ing, and it's on page 100. I'm not going to do the exact problems on page 100, but if you want more practice on this, it's on page 100, uh, that's chapter eight, I think. Um, but I'm just gonna do some different work on the board for us to practice and just explain it a little bit. We went through, that was the last thing we did. Um, and I know a lot has happened since then for all of us with coronavirus. And I know a lot of you have been really busy at home with your kids and some of you are working extra. So um, I know I've forgotten a lot of things since then. So let's just review it. All right, so we're gonna talk about these adjective pairs. These adjectives start with a verb and then they change the verb by adding ed or ing to it, and it makes an adjective. So for example, if we start with the verb confuse, so for example, if we use it as a verb, we might say, oh, you confuse me. Um, so that's using it as a verb. Then they add the suffix. Remember, a suffix is something you can add at the end of a word to change the word. So if we add ed, then it changes the word to confused, okay? And if we add ing, then the word is confusing. And both confuse and confusing, those are both adjectives. So both those words are gonna talk about or describe nouns. Now that can be really confusing. How do we use confused? How do we use confusing? So do I say, he is confused or he's confusing? Both of those maybe sound correct. Or do I say, I am boring or I am bored? It can be tricky. So today I'm gonna again try to clear it up a little bit, help you understand it by giving you some tips. Okay, so the, these words, these adjectives that end with ED, these are the ones that talk about how you feel or your emotions. So not just how you feel, how you feel, how another person feels. Remember, people are the ones who have feelings. Things can't have feelings. So these words won't describe things. Maybe animals, maybe we say animals have feelings. So normally people, how you feel. The ones that end in ing, these tell about or describe a thing, remember things are nouns, or a situation, something that happened or is happening. Okay, so let's give some examples. If I'm going to use the ones that have the ED, and we're gonna talk about how I feel or how you feel or someone else, um, maybe I, maybe right now, I feel disappointed that we can't meet in person. So it's that situation is disappointing. It's disappointing that we can't meet together. So that uses this. It is, disappointing that we can't meet together. I feel disappointed. 
Or we could say about a situation, I know many of you are having to do more right now because your kids are not in school. And so your kids are not in school. Now you have to do all the things, right? You have to clean, you have to cook, you have to do their schoolwork because they are at home. So you have to help them maybe on computer that you don't know how to use. So maybe that situation with all those things that you are doing, maybe that is tiring, right? So that situation is a lot. So that is tiring. And at the end of the day, how do you feel? Maybe you feel tired. So you say, I'm tired because doing all of that is tiring. Okay, so you see how we use this? So you could say, I feel tired because doing all of this is tiring. I don't know if you can read that. It's kind of hard to read in the green. Okay? Or if you were going to use the word confused or confusing, you could say, I feel confused. When do you feel confused? Maybe you feel confused when you don't understand something. So you could say, I feel confused when I can't understand what they're saying. Not understanding what they are saying is confusing. It's confusing when I don't understand what they said. That is confusing. So you might say, if you are reading the directions on a test, sometimes those are not words we use every day. So you might say, those directions are confusing. I feel confused. So some of the things that we might say to uh, with it, uh, end with the ing, you might also say, that is so interesting. I'll use the black pen. You can say, that's so interesting. Maybe you read something in the news or you hear something on the news that's new and you really like it and you say, wow, that's really interesting. You would not say, oh, wow, that's really interested. No, you are interested, but what you heard is interesting. You could say, ah, oh, it's frustrating. The situation is frustrating. It's frustrating right now that we have to stay at home. It's right, we should stay at home so that everyone is safe. But it's frustrating that the things we want to go and do, we can't do those right now. So maybe we feel frustrated. Maybe we feel disappointed. You can also say about something that's good, you can say, it's amazing. Years ago, we wouldn't be able to talk on the internet like this. So I think, it's amazing. I can still talk to you because of the internet. It's amazing. So we can say those words too. Okay, so I'm going to erase this and I'm going to give you some words for us to try. And then what I'm going to want you to do later is for you to try to make some sentences with these. But we'll talk through some of those together. Remember, it starts with the verb. So here's some verbs, relax, relax, 
disappoint interest annoy exhaust and soothe So these are the verb forms. Relax. Just try to relax. Relax. Disappoint. Disappoint. Interest. Does that interest you? Interest. And then this next word, I think you know this, but I'm not sure. Annoy. Annoy. Annoy is a little bit like frustrate, but it's when some small things bother you. Not really big, just small. You can say, that annoys me. So some things that annoy you, it means like bothers you a little bit. Not too bad. Maybe it annoys you that uh, when you go to the store now, many things are not there. Maybe you can't find toilet paper and you are annoyed, okay? Or it annoys you. The next word is exhaust, exhaust. Okay, I was exhausted when I went to the store, exhaust. And then the last word is soothe. I don't think we've done this word before. Soothe is like pretend that you have a sore throat. I think one of you told me when I called you that you had a really sore throat, or maybe your kids do, and it really hurts to talk. What do you do when that happens? Can you do anything to make your throat feel better? When I have a sore throat, I like to make some hot drink, something hot, maybe something with lemon, I drink hot tea all the time, but I like to have a cup of hot tea to drink and then it soothes, so it makes it feel better on my throat. I say, this soothes my throat. So that's the verb, okay? Now we're going to make these into adjectives. So I'm gonna do the adjectives that have ED and the adjectives that have ing. These are called participial adjectives, okay? So remember the ones that have ing describe things or situations and the ones that have ed describe how they describe feelings, how I feel, how someone else feels. Okay? So we're going to add ed. This will become the word Relaxed. Do you feel relaxed today? So relax is like no stress, okay? You are going to just try to relax. Take a deep breath. Whew. When you are stressed, it is good to try to find something to help you relax. I like to go to the beach. The beach is like my happy place. When I go to the beach, it is easy to relax. Right now, I can't go to the beach. So I need to find things at home to help me relax. One thing that helps me relax is to draw. If I listen to music, I feel relaxed. So I can say listening to music for me is relaxing. The music is relaxing. Not all music, just some music that I like. I find that music very relaxing. What is relaxing to you? What makes you feel relaxed? The next word that I have up there is disappoint. Disappoint, so disappoint means not so happy. 
you feel a little bit not happy, okay? You are not so sad, but you are a little sad, okay? So I can say today, I wish we were all together in the classroom at school. So I feel I feel disappointed. I feel a little disappointed. I really wish I could see you. I wish that we could be near, but I am also happy that we can see each other this way. I am thankful that we have technology. So I am a little disappointed that we are not all together. So because we cannot meet together, this, is, this situation is a little bit disappointing. But it is the right thing to do to make everyone stay healthy. We need to stay home. It is the right thing to do. Maybe it is disappointing, but it is right. Maybe I feel disappointed, but I am happy that you are staying home. So the next word you know, the word is interest. So if I add ed, I have the word interested. And ing, I have the word interesting. I love to learn about new cultures and about and to hear all your stories about where you live and what you do there. Learning about new places and new culture. For me, this is very interesting. I feel interested. I am interested to learn about that. So I can say, I feel interested to learn about this. Maybe you are interested in learning English, so you feel interested. I hope so. So the next word I have on here is annoy. So annoy means something bothers you, okay? Maybe not a big thing, maybe just a small thing. This, the camera, okay, this is something annoying. Do, on the camera, it is like a mirror. So we have flipped it. So when I go to see myself and I try to flip my hair, it goes the other way. That is a little bit annoying. So I felt a little annoyed that it goes the wrong way. Small thing, not a big thing. Oh, okay. So maybe when I go to the store, I feel a little bit annoyed. So to talk about my feelings, what do I do? Add ED or ING. Feelings always get ED. So annoyed. I feel annoyed. I feel annoyed that some people, they already have enough toilet paper but they go to the store and they try to take all the toilet paper. Okay, that situation to me is very annoying. I feel annoyed. They should leave enough toilet paper for everyone. Only take what you need. The next word is exhaust. Exhaust. If you are exhausted, do you remember this word? We talked about this. Exhausted, there's the word tired, and there's the word exhausted. Exhausted is way more, it's bigger than tired. So now you have so much to do. Many of you have much to do. 
Maybe it's even at work. Maybe you are working and you are working more hours. I've talked to one student who is working many, many, many hours. And at the end of the day, he is so tired that he just goes to bed because he feels exhausted. Very, 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 very tired. Exhausted. He said to me, his days at work are exhausting. He is thankful to have a job. Many people do not have a job now. He is thankful, but he feels exhausted because there is a lot of work. His work is exhausting. I know, Ziba, you said that moving for you, it's a lot of work to move over the weekend. You said you felt exhausted because moving is exhausting. Right now, my husband Tim and I are going to be moving too. We need to pack up our house, move all of our things, the big furniture, all the things need to move. So we, right now I feel tired, but I think that I will feel exhausted because I know moving is exhausting. And then the last word, soothe. If I add ed, soothed, soothing. To me, a cup of hot tea is very soothing. But some of you don't like hot tea. Some of you might do something else to soothe a sore throat or to soothe other things that cause stress. What do you do to soothe yourself when you are feeling stressed? It helps me. So what I would like you to do is to take some of these words. If you don't know these words, you can practice saying them. Relaxed, disappointed, interested, annoyed, exhausted, soothed, relaxing, disappointing, interested, interesting, annoying, exhausting, soothing. And then you can make your own sentences with these sentences about your own life. So for your homework, if you have time, I'd like for you to write some sentences using these words, using either the ED form or the ING form, but you have to think about, are you using those correctly? Remember, ED, these talk about feelings. You can say he feels, she feels, and you can say why they feel that way. He feels interested in something. What does he feel interested in? Or he feels interested because, he feels exhausted because, or it is relaxing to go to the beach. It is relaxing to play with my kids. It is disappointing. And then what is it? It is disappointing that the parks are closed. What is it that you think is disappointing? So try to write a few sentences. You can text me the sentences or in the comment section below this video, you can just write a couple of sentences. You can write as many as you want. All right, thank you for watching this. I hope I see you again soon. Bye.